Hey all, this is Derek and this is section 3.2. It's going to be kind of a meet and greet with absolute value functions. And so we'll go through the uh, definition and then we'll use the transformations from the last section on our first uh, version of a function. And then just a little bit of identifying kind of the regular stuff from a graph. So the um, definition of an absolute value function is going to actually use a new definition in and of itself. And that is this piecewise function. And so what this says is f of x equals absolute value x. Um, when x is greater than zero, it's going to equal x, greater than or equal to zero. When x is less than zero, it's going to equal negative x. So what this is saying is this absolute value that the outputs, y, f of x, right, is going to look like x when we're um, to the right of zero, and it's going to look like negative x when we're to the left of zero. And that's basically what our absolute value looks like, is this a v over here. So um, x, that would be just a slope of 1 through the origin. Negative x, that's a slope of negative 1 through the origin. And sometimes there's things that you just cannot describe with one equation, and then that's where piecewise function comes in. Um, so also notice our graph, it's going to have its uh, vertex at the origin, 0, 0. And then its slope is just going to over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. It's going to do that on both sides, right? So it's going to be symmetrical about uh, the y-axis. It's an even function. Um, domain in general is actually domain always is all real numbers. And then the range on this, at least for the one, what's what we'll call a parent function, is from 0. That would be inclusive to infinity. Uh, so let's see what transformations are going to look like with these. Uh, so this first one is we're going to transform uh, absolute value x, which is going to be all of this section, into the transform function where we're going minus 3 on the inside plus 2 on the outside. So first let's see what the equation would look like. Um, that would be absolute value of x minus 3 and then plus 2 would be our g of x. Um, and so this is going to go minus 3 on the inside, remember, was right 3. And then uh, plus 2 on the outside was up 2. So what we want to do is think of what's called our parent function. So our 1 that's just at 0, 0, plain old uh, y equals absolute value x. And that was 0, 0, and then over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1 on both sides. And we got kind of that V shape. When you're doing the homework, you won't draw the parent function. I'm just doing this as a reference uh, for these problems. And so then what we want to do is take this thing and move it. Put my other arrow. Um, I want to move everything right 3 and up 2. So if I start with my vertex and I go right 3 and up 2, now I'm here. I just have to draw the same shape. I don't have to move all the points individually um, if I know the shape. So over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. Same thing on this side. And then that would be our transformed graph. Uh, for this one, we have a plus 1 on the inside. So that would look like x plus 1 and then another plus 2. I bet I suspected I was supposed to change that, but oh well. So this is going to go uh, left 1 and then up 2 again. So from here, we go left 1 and up 2. And again, once you know that shape, you don't need the parent function. You're just taking that vertex always from 0, 0, and going to your new starting point. Okay, so 2a, we're transforming absolute value of x with a reflection and an up 4. So that's going to be reflect, so it's in front, so that's reflect about x. Reflect about x, and then up 4. So, again, our regular right there. If I reflect that, it would be like this. And remember, we do our any um, reflections first, and then our uh, up, down, and left, right uh, last, with stretches in between. Um, actually, I think it says stretches first, and then reflections, and kind of need to do those either direction. Anyhow, so now we're going to move this up four, and then that will be it. So up four. And that's that one. So here we are stretching this, and this is a vertical stretch because it's outside. So it's going to get a factor of three bigger. 
and that minus four on the inside um, will go right four. So let me do, here's the nothing's happened. So that's just our parent function. And then if I do a stretch on this, so remember this three multiplies all of our, our y values. So if I were graphing just y equals three absolute value x, without the three, if I put in one, I would get one. But now when I have a three in front, when I put in one, I get out three. When I put in two, instead of getting two, I get three times as much, I get six. And so that's that vertical stretch that we saw from the last section. So that would look kind of like that. And then this says we're going to shift it right four. So we just bring that vertex right over here and then just copy our slope, which is three. And that gets us a graph. Okay, I think that was our first LA sighting of the quarter. Uh, for number three, we're um, going to vertically compress the function by one third, and then we're gonna go uh, right two. So from the parent function, um, if we're working in thirds, it's nice to use a point that is divisible by three. So I would go out to three, and then one third of three would just be one. Um, so that seems like an easy spot to graph, rather than trying to graph a third over here. And then once we had that, we were going, which way was it? Uh, right to, so then we're here, oops, and then this should be over three. And then this one, we have a minus two in front, so that's gonna stretch it by two, and then reflect, and then that's left two and up five. So the parent function would be, you know, that same one I keep drawing, and then the negative two, that's gonna reflect and stretch by two, so let me do that part. So that's basically on this one, just changing our slope to two, or negative two. And then we'll pick this one up and go um, left two and up five. And then that would be the transformed one. Okay, and then in this last example, we're gonna answer just a bunch of questions that we've seen um, in earlier chapters, just with a different function. So we're directed to sketch a graph of this and then find all these things. So um, this is going to go, minus two will go right two, up six, and then again reflected and stretched by two. So that would be reflected and stretched by two, and then taking this one and moving it right two and up six. And here I really, I want these to be in the right place because I'm gonna have to read some points. So I'm just gonna use that slope and then just trace that down Um, so that I can see my intercepts. Okay, so uh, the zeros of the function are at the values. So here we want to type x equals negative 1, comma, and then looks like 5. And so when they're saying the zeros, they're looking for a list. And then the next part is, what are the x-intercepts? They're the exact same things, but now they're looking for ordered pair, which is super dumb. But that is what they are looking for. Um, and so negative 1 and then 5, 0. Uh, the y-intercept is at the point. And basically, if it says point, it's, it wants ordered pair uh, values. It's looking for a list. Um, two would be our y-intercept, so that's as a point would be x is zero, y is two. f of x is increasing on the interval, so it's getting bigger as we go left to right from negative infinity up through two. And then decreasing two to infinity. Um, f of x has a maximum value of, um, so this is the idea of a local max or min, so maximum value of uh, 6, 
when x equals 2. And then minimum, it doesn't have a local min, it just goes to negative infinity. So we would say DNE and DNE. Uh, the domain, domain for absolute values is all real. So negative infinity to infinity. And the range in this case is going to go from negative infinity and then up to and including that 6.